thank you. Hey, congratulations for luck and having it uh, being showcased here at Animation is its Film uh, Festival. How does it feel for yourself? It's so exciting. You know, it's really exciting to be here with um, other animated films and sort of the the sort of animation community. It's super, super fun. Well, tell us what drew you into luck in the first place. Oh, yeah. You know, I was asked to sort of look at the materials that existed on, on that particular project. And, you know, they had this idea that the um, lead character is someone that grew up in the foster care system and had lived experience in the foster care system. And I was really drawn to that idea because I come from a very big family and belonging to that family and having that connection to that family is the thing I think I cherish most in life. So for me, the opportunity to tell a story where you meet someone who doesn't have family and eventually gets a family, I thought, oh, we could create a really lovely story around that idea. Now, how did you want to approach the uh, animation part of, uh, of Luck? Yeah, well, our, our lead girl, Sam, right, she's got bad luck in every way. She has this um, real-life bad luck of not having a family like we talked about, but then she also has bad luck, like random bad luck, the bad luck we all experience every day in life, right? And so uh, we really thought it'd be super fun to kind of um, be inspired by the physical comedy greats of Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin, and Lucille Ball, you know, and so we really watched a lot of their, a lot of their scenes and a lot of their um, films, and we were like, we want to do that kind of physical comedy with our girls. So that was like super fun to create that kind of physical comedy. Now the animation style, was it was this uh, a whole lot different from the previous projects you worked on? You know, in the way that we really wanted to go with that physical comedy, less is more. So it was really about figuring out what are the great rhythms that we can put in. You know, when you watch that that kind of comedy, there's kind of this action, action, pause kind of feeling, you know? And so we really sort of embraced that and, and we really went for this idea of less is more. You know, even with her emotional close-ups or, you know, we have like Bob the cat, right? We have a four-legged creature, you know, and just even sometimes getting in close with him and just little tiny expressions. We really wanted to go for that feeling. Now working with Skydance, how was that experience? Fantastic. Love it. We're brand new. We're really excited. You know, it's really fun to be part of building a studio. It's great. As, as part of this studio, being brand new, does this make you like a trendsetter or there was a plenty of experience on board? I believe John Lasseter's on board. Yes, he is. And there's plenty, plenty of experience. You know, there's there's um, a great range, I think, of artists. Like we had a, a story artist on our crew that was um, just literally graduated from Cal Arts and we were her first job. You know, so we had a really great range of people who have artists who have been in the business for a long time and then new artists. It's great. Really, really fun. So in the part of animation, what was the most challenging, most difficult part for this film? Yeah, I think part of it was, um, you know, we made the film. It was all during COVID, right? During the COVID um, stay at home. So a lot of the film was over Zoom. So we had to figure out a way to have meaningful collaboration over Zoom. And so that, I think, figuring out strategies for that was challenging, but but we worked it out and it was really awesome. Um, and then I think, you know, for us, it was probably just like, we have characters that are um, a lot of different heights, you know? So for instance, if you, we have three characters walking in a scene, one is human size, one's a four-legged cat, and one's a two-foot leprechaun. So figuring out their walk cycles to make sure they can all walk down the same path together actually turned out to be very challenging. Wow, so how, how did you manage to accomplish that uh, for yourself? We have great animators, right? So we just started looking at it, you know, and honestly, when we looked at it in Storyboard, it's a problem we didn't see coming. You know, so in storyboard, it was totally fine. And then once we started animating, like Sam felt like she was walking really slow. Bob, we kind of kept at his pace. And then the leprechaun, Jerry, was like, his feet were going so fast. So we just really had to rely on the artist, kind of continue to share, okay, this version, look at this version, until we all found kind of the right version where each character felt like they were in the same scene together. 
I guess that's uh, one of the things that audiences don't really think about, but mm -hmm. uh, but it is the magic of animators. Like oh yourself. my gosh, it is absolutely the magic of animators. You know, they're such creative problem solvers. You know, it's so exciting to see their work and to see them. You know, you fall in love with a storyboard drawing and you think, oh, I love that. I love that expression. And then you give it to the animators and now the animators take it to another level and you're like, oh, I love that expression. I didn't think it could get better. And then you send it on to lighting and you're like, oh, they lit it and made that look better. And that is one of the things I love the most about animation is that collaborative spirit to kind of take something from, take the ball from the department before you and further the game. One, one of the things that's the best part about uh, being in an animation, doing an animation film is world building. And you technically built, I want to say, I'm not, I don't want to count the human world, but you technically built two other far different worlds. Could you tell about that? Yeah, that was really exciting and challenging. And it was another thing um, uh, in the materials when I came onto the, came onto the film, there, there was one uh, idea of a leprechaun. And so I said, let's maybe take that idea of a leprechaun and let's expand that idea and create a magical world where luck comes from that none of us knew about, right? Because if you think about it, luck is totally random. Humans are obsessed with it. There's so much research about it, but you can't control it and you can't create it. So we wanted to create a world where this luck comes from, but keep with those rules. Make sure that luck still is random. So those kinds of truths that came out of our research helped us create the world. So for instance, the land of good luck, if you have good luck all the time, you don't need railings. You don't need, you know, stoplights. You don't, like everything works perfectly in sync in rhythm. So those kinds of things are what drove the decisions. And um, our production designer, Fred Warder, we had done a lot of research on uh, luck and luck icons and colors and symbols and numbers all around the world. So we had a huge deck of sort of research on luck and we handed that to Fred Warder, our production designer. And a week later he came back and he, what he did was he built two worlds on the same side, on the two worlds on opposite sides of a coin. Mm. And he was like, good luck on top and bad luck on the bottom. And that was the very first image he sort of painted for the movie. And we're like, that's the world right there. Let's take that as sort of the, the heart of the world and let's expand it out from there. Well, tell us about the bad luck side then. Right, well, the bad luck is just the opposite, right? Everything goes wrong. You can count, it's always under construction. It's always, everything's always going wrong. And, you know, and then the bad luck characters, you know, bad luck is really in some ways the hero of the movie. And the bad luck characters, because they deal with bad luck all the time, they're actually really well adapted to life, right? Because mm -hmm. they just have to always pivot. They fix stuff. They need to rely on each other to help each other. So they're actually quite lovely guys, you know, guys and gals. Because of good luck and bad luck being on opposite ends, you had to deal with both the colorizations and the lighting. How, how challenging was that? Yeah, you know, we're in green and purple and we wanted like both of them to be deep and vibrant and feel magical. So it took a while, it, I will say it took a while to get that purple to be really vibrant and sparkly and it took that, you know, the green to really, um, we find, had to find different hues of green to use, you know, so it was really, it was super fun. It was super, super fun. And what, what about the other side of that coin? That's the bad luck side. Yes. Yeah, no, yeah, so that's the purple, that deep, deep purple, right? And we just really, it was a matter of being able to like have enough color without the scenes being too dark, right? So that's really what the challenge was, is can we see Bob, our black cat, in the dark world, in the purple world? So it was really just a matter of like making sure that we kind of, you know, lit the scenes in the right way that would pick up the sheen on his coat. I forgot that Bob was a black cat. That must have been um, pretty yeah. tough in an animated film. Yeah, yes. They did such an amazing job. <laughs> now, of course, you know, in the land of magical creatures, you have to come up with certain designs. Um, tell us about the, the certain designs and looks of these magical creatures in the world of luck. Yeah, so the first thing we did is uh, we took, again, this whole research of um, lucky icons from around the world, 
and we gave it to, it was the first assignment actually I gave on the movie to the story artists and also the art department, everyone in the art department. We gave them this, uh, this packet of research from around the world of luck, good luck and bad luck icons and colors and numbers. And we said, okay, you've got three days, go crazy. Just start to play and just create characters. And out of that amazing like brainstorm came the dragon that Jane Fonda plays. We, that came the uh, millennial Gen Z mashup leprechauns, you know, female leprechauns came out of that. Our character, Jeff the Unicorn, came out of that. So of course we were find the designs, you know, based on that, but the initial thoughts were people just really having fun and exploring what a lucky creature or a bad luck creature could look like. Now was this all, all these uh, creatures of, of luck researched in they're lucky in one form or another? Yeah, they're lucky or, or in some place or another, right? Because sometimes, like Bob the Cat, black cats are lucky in Scotland, but here in America, they're not lucky. So they were lucky or unlucky in some part of the world. Wow. And, and in the case for telling a story, because I know uh, John Lasseter always liked to put in that emotional element. Yeah into these type of films. Yeah. Tell us about uh, that process and you, you living living up to that standard. Yeah, I think it's something that we really care about deeply at Skydance for sure. It's part of the kind of stories we want to tell is stories that have a deep emotional core. I love for that deep emotional core to be based in reality. We met with these amazing young adults who had um, the same circumstance in their life as our lead character, Sam. They had grown up or had lived experience in the foster care system, and at 18, when they age out, they had never been adopted, right? And so they literally are out in the world alone. And we met with these young people, and they were so incredible because they are, I call them sort of the heroes of their own story. They have real bad life experience, right? Lived experience in their life with their families. And they were so positive and so hopeful and so giving. And we thought that's who we need to honor in this story. And they just, they just want to believe and keep believing that someday they will find a forever family. And so we were just so drawn and inspired by them that we just made that the core of our main character, that real emotion that we got from those kids. Wow, that, uh, that is a message that uh, was really relayed into the film. Yeah, it was super interesting in our first audience preview. You know, when we audience tested the movie the first time, people were so inspired by her. And you know, we all feel like we've had times in our life where bad luck just feels like it keeps coming. Do you know? And the audience told us, look at that happens to me, and you know what? This is helping me. I'm gonna keep going. Like I know my good luck is coming, or I know that it this bad luck feels horrible right now, but it's gonna lead to something better. You know, so we were thrilled actually. We were thrilled because it's quite a, a nuanced I you know, it's a nuanced idea to think about, you know, and uh, it's a more subtle story arc and the audiences are loving it. They they are loving it. And um, what's up next for you? Are you jumping into another animated project? I am. Of course. I'm in development. I'm in development. Of course you can. I'm, I'm staying at Skydance. I'm super happy there. And I, I am lucky enough to get to start thinking about another idea. Most excellent, Dan. We, we wish you well because you are one of the luckiest women out there, especially oh. working that, there at Skydance. Thank you so much, and thanks for your time. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, great. All right.